like that where you you were just too late and i didn't find problems with mauser's composition or their draft it was fine hard engage into poke it's whatever man but if you don't go for that engage earlier and you size your composition then you have a problem change up in bands yeah, not gonna let Wonderboy help First uh, one out. It was very annoying even early into the game. Um, they were getting chunk damage onto like Alistair, they were getting chunk onto like small uh, poke and skirmish engages, so gonna take away the the Trundles to start off the banning phase. Gangplank as well, always no pretty much banned on the red mm. side, and Lissandra as uh, the following ban. Lissandra is a blue side ban as well. Is an interesting one. Lissandra's yeah. strength is that you can just pick her and then flex. It, I guess if they don't want it passed over to red side at this point and then they take a first rotation and can still counter pick whichever solo lane they have so it's not that surprising but certainly is one of those picks that you may expect to see first picked on a blue side yeah not a hundred percent that's more the likes of like a tom kenship available and inspire no get that out of there we don't want to deal with that which leaves us in a situation where lulu was banned in the last game so was rexai i don't think inspire have the bandwidth in this situation to actually ban Rek'Sai. Mm. <laughs> I'd be very surprised if they ban Rek'Sai over Lulu. Lulu being available for Maus would almost certainly be a first pick. And therefore Lulu will be banned out. So I, I really don't mm. think like um, Dan's jungle Rek'Sai is that big of an issue for no. Inspire, unless he's only been playing that but for the last six months since the last time we saw him. Shen is the ban that was banned out by Inspire in the last game. Mm. Uh, Corky was not banned as we saw it played by Inspire. And that is a first pick Shen. It still yeah. can be a flex yeah. at this situation. I'm trying to, I'm trying to rationalize with myself how whether I like that or dislike that, or whether I'm indifferent. Uh, right at the moment, I'm kind of like indifferent on dislike, but uh -huh. still think it's fairly, it's okay. Like, so if like a one was dislike and a ten was like, you're like a four right now. Yeah, I'm somewhere in the middle. Okay. Uh, and, and the reason for that is I just feel like there are stronger picks and two of them have just kind of been picked up. Yeah. With Corky off the table, uh, 80 carries that are fairly consistent at this point. Callista is going to be one of those. We just saw how good Willite had in that game. And now the Alistair has gone over. So Rux mm. doesn't get his Alistair. Uh, Kindred is not allowed, is uh, still banned as it's 6.1. Ban so yeah, they are out of here. Yeah, in uh, in Rift Jail. Uh, <laughs> but maybe maybe these teams know something we don't, because the Shen was banned out last mm. time. So uh, the fact that they put priority on it as well. Yeah, I mean, it, it screams to me the kind of champion that B2 wants to play as well. Yeah, it's, it's like a champion that is very solid in a 1v1 lane setup that you can then have the split push potential and the ability to join in fights. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything that I inherently dislike. I just don't know how I feel about it being first pick. Yeah. It does deny it from Satorius as well. So that is something to be said for that. But this is another weird one to be blind picked. Syndra <laughs> blind pick into mid lane. Not even Power of Evil does that. He will like last yeah, pick that stuff on like red I, side. So I think Bjergsen blind picked Syndra in NALCS, mm. if I'm not mistaken. He's played two games, I think it is, in NALCS of Syndra. Syndra is not the most well-rounded champion in the game. I mean, fairly low mobility when it comes to a mid lane role. Has good catch, good damage, but doesn't move around the lane particularly well. Nope. So maybe something you could see come out like a Zed that can pressure it. Because hitting that stun on Zed as he comes in with a death mark is difficult. You've got to wait for the orb to spawn. Yeah. I also wonder what she's like in 6-1 uh, with everyone going Swifties nowadays. Yeah. If the extra mobility from that helps as an early pickup as well. It's so easy to go uh, early on because of how much it costs. Grace picked up from uh, from IE once again. Maxwell had a great showing on that champion. Malphite also picked up. So they're basically drafting what Mal's had last game apart from the Graves. Yeah, I feel like this Malphite is saying that will we just assume Shen's going top. We haven't seen Shen support too much, if at all, not in Europe. Hmm. Trying to think of any Not other regions uh, off the top of my head. No, no games really stand out. We have seen Shen in the top lane, however. So they're assuming just take a neutral lane with engage potential coming out from Inspire. Where do Maus go from here, though? They have engage on Inspire, and they go right down the disengage route. Is they say, okay, you've got Alistair. Well, we'll pick one champion that is very good against Alistair. 
And that is Janna down in that support role. Yeah, uh, Janna, Lucian as well. Um, they could maybe do a 1-3-1 one, one, um, and then have Dan as the other split mm. pusher. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I don't know how I feel about Syndra being in the other lane. Uh, that actually is something Mouse could do. Mm. You raise a good point. That is why Rek'Sai was probably banned in the last game. Don't want that weird Dan yeah. Black Rek Lever rush Dan, so. on Rek'Sai. Yeah, so they do have the setup for that. Then you've got to be careful, though, of the engage coming from Inspire. Alistair Malphite. Yeah. Fate's call. Alistair Malphite, uh, Callista, exactly. And now you add a Lux on top of that. So if one person gets caught out, they're getting <laughs> ulted <laughs> by everybody. Yeah. Everybody is just going to throw everything because that is a burst combo, if ever I've seen one. <laughs> Crazy when you look at it. as well. Yeah, Graves, Lux, just layer them on top of each other. If someone gets caught, they're dead. You might as well just take your hands away from the keyboard and be <laughs> like, well, I'm going to be CC'd anyway. So, yeah, Mouse, I want to see what they do um, in this game and how they play this one out. Uh, Lucy and Janna are in the bot lane. Hmm. hmm. I mean, I uh, it's a lane we've commonly seen. Like, yeah. well, I say commonly, previously seen a yes. lot. Where you put the shield on, on Lucian, utilize the double tap passive and get so much extra damage coming from it. Mm. Um, the problem with Janna lanes and why we saw them drop off is just that it became very clear of when to trade past the Janna. You just either burst through the shield or wait out the shield. And then engage. And then do <laughs> things. Yeah. Also, she had a, a nerf to her Q. So yeah. uh, low ranks, the actual double tap Q where you just fire it instantly mm. doesn't really go so far. So no. I, I, now this is a really cool different setup from Mouse. A way different composition. Um, and I just need to see how they play it. Last time it was a reactive composition. Yeah. Uh, now they kind of started drafting this one from the get-go and were like, okay, this is what we're going to do. It was less reactive. So now that they had like the tempo in Champion Select, maybe they'll make more proactive plays in game as well. Because it was all about like trying to find the right engage and being too slow to it. Now they can actually make some happen, especially with Dan being on the champion that was banned out against him, Beansu as well, and Sevex picking a champion then you, you can only pick Sinja if you feel very comfortable on this yeah, champion. That is that is very true, and we'll see how comfortable he is, but uh, as we load up into the game make sure you get on Twitter, use those hashtags M-O-U-Win, hashtag I-E-Win if you think Inspire can take this 2-0, and zero. it's a best of 2 mm -hmm. so there are still points, even if you split it 1-1. One one. Yep, you get 1 point would prefer to get those 3 for Inspire, but getting into the second game, uh, so much engage from uh, from Inspire. And then I wonder whether they'll play pr uh, proactively or reactively. We saw Mouse on the back foot not really being able to do too much, but attempting engages time and time again. For this setup, I, after seeing the last game, I would expect Inspire to be looking for flank opportunities fairly regularly, looking to try and get into fights more frequently than Mouse were, because Inspire, if they catch one person with a light binding or something like that, that's it. They're gone. <laughs> as long as there's the follow-up coming from Inspire. So, how can they slow the Mao's potential 1-3-1? One, one? It's not going to be as frequent as uh, as normal, because Dan is going to have to obviously do the, uh, the whole jungle thing, where <laughs> yes. he has to be around objectives, can't be too far away. Well, last time he just didn't care. He went bot lane. <laughs> <laughs> when like That's Baron true, was being actually. contested, and he got like an inhib tower. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not sure if that really uh, Dan really cares too much for that. I was also saying last time we saw this, like last year, that like, maybe they should just run Callista, and then you kind of have like a second way to burst about. Nope, didn't do that last year either. Didn't do it in this game. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, Dan will do his own thing, but uh, often it may work out. Beansu on Shen. Uh, Beansu's always kind of been like a, a solo, uh, like, it sounds dumb, but he's been a solo laner who likes to be by himself, because he used to be like an Irelia player back in the day, yep. but Irelia not really played anymore, so Shen, next best thing, he's a tank and he works right now, so Beansu will take it. Um, Instant Satorius, there's like very small windows for um, Shen to get the advantages in that lane, but it's not really going to go anywhere. Like, you have burst potential when your opponent's at 10%, so <laughs> it's, like, it's not really going to If I Q auto him and then get the damage off Taunt, yeah. I can kill him. Yes! Shen nice. mechanics. Yeah, exactly. Everybody forgets that that damage comes from the Taunt. Wendell Boat doesn't care for Tarek attacking Warlight, but you can see Warlight took Fair amount of damage just from the shield trading. The shield plus the autos that came from Tarek. Now, this is one thing that they probably have to slow down a little bit. Once a couple of levels get on uh, the Callista, get on the Alistair, they have the sustain to go through this, 
you cannot afford to just throw that shield out every time it's available. That the damage you get from that will just be sustained up, and then it becomes very easy to just engage either on the target after the shield is gone or engage on the Janna. So far, though, in the early levels, it's harder to do that because yes. they don't have the burst yeah. to punish them, especially in that last trade, which was really frustrating for Wendell Bow because <laughs> he headbutted Tarek and the shield remains on like a couple HP, so it stayed up, meaning the damage stayed up. And as he knocked him away, Tarek kept on sh uh, oh, shooting Koski. him. Mid lane, though, knock up, Koski will have to flash away. But uh, with the knockup already landing, they can get a little bit of damage onto him as he retreats to tower. Last time we saw uh, Lux very recently was Ica, and he did not respect the gank and then died. Yeah, he did not flash in that game. This time for Cosq, flashing as soon as the uh, Scatter the Week came through. So for Cosq, that's a really rough timing. It's actually bottom lane isn't engaged. Oh, what a knockup from Rox. Will stop Wendelbo from getting the knock into the tower. With Maxwell coming down as well. He'll flash into the lane, trying to get that extra charge of end of the line. But Tarek looks like he's going to go down. Blasted in the face with Maxwell's auto attack and the first blood over to Inspire. First blood to Inspire. I'm just going to double check it. Was it a Q flash that came out from Wendelbo or flash into combo? Pulverized flash, I believe. Checking it. Yeah, Q flash in from Wendelbo. So very difficult to actually read that. And this is one of those problems is like with a Janna, if you can't get the, the the hurricane to just knock people up and stop them from coming in, so difficult to actually take these trades. So at this point in the game, it was a nice gank out from Maxlaw. Good timing as uh, Maxlaw looks for the middle lane. This time doesn't land Aww. the Q. Oh, so close. Yeah. Yeah. So close. As a Graves player, you you always feel like it's about to connect to a wall, and so it's like, I can shoot now. Oh. I've got this. Nope. Carl's Q has to respect the gank again, though. Like, the top no side now. is warded. Dan has been spotted. Flash, slow down, gets the knockup, gets the stun as well, and the auto attacks in from Dan with the Queen's Wrath, Sevex. Oh, CC under the binding. tower, and Cold Q outplays them in the one on two and picks up the kill. Really nice outplay, and this is one of the strengths of Lux. Like, honestly, is as long as you're being very aware of the gank timing. As long as you're aware, her kit is so good for playing defensively in that situation. Land the binding, shield yourself, follow up with damage, make sure you get the, the proc from the autos as well and, and mix them in. As long as you're not in like fatal threat of dying, Lux is very strong playing defensively. And I think we're taking another I look at it again. again. So Koskyu actually gets stunned here. And does Sebex close the gap with a flash after yes. this? Because that would explain like, why does Sebex keep going forward? That's what I'm looking for. He gets the Ignite, he looks for the auto. Ah, uh, he wasn't expecting the barrier to come out. The returning shield is what does it as well. He wasn't respecting the barrier that came from Cars Q, and it was just enough to hold through the Ignite. I know Stress feels very passionately about <laughs> Lux mid as one of the only champions he's mastered f uh, Mastery 5 on. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I know. It's really sad, actually. But it, it's one of these situations where, like, Lux at the top level play doesn't get played too often because it, it is difficult to read every gank that comes in. It is difficult to, you know, make an outplay like that because especially in these early levels before her ult, your actual damage relies on you getting rotations off. That time you've got a tower helping you. Yes. So uh, Sevex gets baited in, gets double summoners and uh, ultimately ends up dying. I mean, you pretty much know you're going to get ganked at that point as yeah. Lux. I have no flash. Dan just ganked me. He's off the map. He's probably going to come in. So, like, he has a little bit of forewarning on that one, but just the fact he made the outplay was was fantastic in the mid lane. And Koskyu has really shown up in this series. I hope he continues to do so as the weeks go on because Koskyu could be a major carry. And this is the type of stuff we were seeing from him when the first time we saw Koskyu and we were really hyping him up. Um, then he really just got outshone by the likes of Senkux as the yeah. split went on. Yeah, well, he did. And it, honestly, it, it was a little sad to see when you when you saw Koski, who was just completely bodying people yeah. in the spring, just kind of have a very quiet split. I'm glad to see he seems to be back on top form, at least in this series against Maus. Must admit, it, it's been a long time since I've seen Sebex. Like we were talking about it, 2013 was the last thing of note in in my mind that Sebex did. So, if if like people are saying, he is on the up. Nice attempt at the minion taxi. Mm. Uh, if he is on the up, it'll be good to watch him throughout the split. But in this first series, I've not been super impressed by Sevex. No, not yet. Um, that has been up against Koski. There's many other mid laners you can go up against that may be impressed. Specifically on Cinder as well, because Cinder is a pick you pick to be flashy and you show that you're a strong laner and you can outplay your opponent. He's maintaining CS despite the kill.
Mm -hmm. um, and now he's got level 6, he can't really make a play because it's Lux, and she's literally standing <laughs> behind her caster minion, so how are you ever going to get in range unless Dan comes in for a gank? Maxor clearing out his jungle, uh, got that first kill of the game, and is on his way to Wari Enchant, which is uh, basically the build path for Graves nowadays. Dan looking for this bot lane gank, perhaps, or not. Or maybe, twice. or not. Thinks a third time, and it's like, yeah, I'm going yeah, for okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going. <laughs> it's like, mm, I don't know. But, uh, no, I don't out. think he'll find the angle there. So, uh, I don't think he's going. He's moved all the way back. But uh, waiting for the Krugs. Yeah. You know, one thing about Koski, uh on this Lux is I wonder how quickly he's going towards CDR. Because when we saw Ica play it, he actually opted for like the majority of just AP with uh, like swiftness boots and he flat damage rather than CDR. He went Abyssal as well, which confused yeah. oh, me. Oh, yes, you yes. You're never going to get in range for that to be effective. I looked at that and I was like, what, are you, what, are, what is that? <laughs> That's <laughs> like, I'm going to get engaged on and then I'm going to fight you. It's like, <laughs> like, well, the point blank binding auto E <laughs> yeah. combo is just going to do so much damage. Um, obviously, as well, Lux, uh, the synergy with Thunderlords is very good, but it's top lane that we got the aggression. He's not going to get the return damage of end of the line because Beans will flash away and he should be home and dry, but still get the flash at the expense of Santorus's ultimate. Santorius's. You want to say Santorius? I want to say Santorius. Well, time. he's playing he's today. Coming later. So he's coming later, don't worry. <laughs> and so, yeah. Man, if they were on the same team, I would not be able to cast the game. Like. But at least then you could call the 2v2 Santorius. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. you'd be fine. I would. That's why I just called him then. At some point, they're going to be against each other, and I relish that day. He's going to call the champion yeah, names, Pulse man. Pulse is like. just like, I'm out. I'm, I'm <laughs> done here, guys. Like, uh, you know, player names are too hard, man. Yeah. I, can't, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Anyway. Tilted. Dragon was taken by Marison. This is a complete flip on what happened in the last game. Last game, it was Inspire that were, were kind of looking for the earlier dragons. They got three in the game. This time, Mauser managed to take it, but Inspire have been getting the kills across the map and getting the lane advantages as well. You can see a small lead down in that AD carry position for Woolite right now. And he's a player we haven't really talked too much about. Uh, kind of, this sounds really over dramatic, but fell from grace when he kind of was replaced off Rocket from the LCS, uh, came into Challenger, had a good split, didn't get picked back up again. So he's here remaining in Challenger for another split, even though he's kind of shown that he's pretty much better than the, the AD carries we've got here in Challenger. Yeah. So I'm interested now to see how that progression goes. Like, he kind of made an unfortunate name for himself in the yeah. LCS, like pulling a Woolite was a thing. Um, but then he came into Challenger and started destroying every other AD yeah. carry. <laughs> it was like Challenger version of playing a Woolite was like, you would destroy people for yes. like 30 minutes. Yep. Like, and there would be no hope. Unfortunately, LCS Woolite was kind of almost the same. And then after 30 minutes, a little bit of mispositioning would like yeah. cost the team the game, which is unfortunate that it sticks with him. But he, 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 honestly, he has shrugged a lot of that off. Yeah, uh, even when he first joined Challenger, we didn't see it that much. Yeah, no. Trying to think of any major ones, uh, I, I can't think of. He was too busy killing his enemy. Yeah. <laughs> He's too busy yeah. being unbelievably fed. Yeah. Uh, but he has got stiffer competition now in, in Challenger series. Mm. He's got the likes of Holy Phoenix. We'll be, uh, you know, t seeing later, talking a lot about cool later. One. So there's some really cool AD carry matchups here. Yeah, and players, lots of big pedigrees this time around. Uh, Max that the is a lot of damage coming in from Bean Su, and Sartorius will have to head back to his tower. <laughs> There's not really much he can do. I was going to say, there's a lot of damage coming from Bean Su, but most of it is coming from the tower. Yes. <laughs> that was uh, Max Law stepping way too far forward, not really uh, thinking that one through. It's like, oh, Shen has a taunt. Okay, well, I'll walk into his turret. I just have to believe it's dealing damage. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, most of that was from the tower. Uh, uh, to be honest, if we see Beansu go for that like annoyingly stupid uh, dead man's plate Shen build, where you just so actually good. have a ridiculous amount of damage, you just run after people chunking yeah. them. So Sunfire Cape into Titanic Hydra is no, just so away. much damage. Go away, I don't want to think about that. No, but against this team when you have enough magic damage, he can't really afford to do so. Um, but I would love it if he did. Well, like coming in for the engage, the knockout with Fate's called the headbutt, the pulverize off to the side of the wall. Satorius comes into this fight, looking for the chase down, has his ultimate if he needs to lock anyone down. Beansu also came into the fight with the stand United, but now he's starting to regret that decision as he goes down. Maxwell comes in for the assist as well. Koskyu stops Dan on route as he tries to head into the bottom lane, and now this tower should be going down. Oh, the engage Great once again! Engage. And another follow-up from Alistair, ultimate coming in from the mid lane as well, trying to pick up that kill, but another kill over to Inspire and the bottom turret, making those proactive plays and getting ahead in this game.
Inspire pulled the first punch bottom lane with the teleport, came before the stand United and meant that Inspire were able to get the good engage. Will I looked like he was taking so much damage and not trading it back, but it's the, the difference between like Janna shield going onto Tarek plus having a BF sword means that his damage looks insane. But when the rest of Inspire turn up and just go like three versus two, easy, easy kills for them. And that's Inspire extending their lead to four and one. Sebex was kind of trapped in the middle lane. Couldn't roam all the way down because he couldn't quite pass Coscu who was still hanging around the river. Does mean he gets damage on the tower though. And this is uh, a good little uh, start for Maus when it comes to this mid lane tower. Last game they had a lot of trouble in mid with uh, getting pushed in a lot. So if they can get this tower early, maybe they can slow down Inspire. Maybe. Also the first kill um, went over to Dan. So his split pushing days may uh, come into this well, game at some point. Oh, nice Mid double goes down, And maybe Dan might be dying here. That would uh, definitely stop him from split pushing. He'll drop low, but back away. And that was just a nice rotation to mid lane. Oh, Max Law is in that situation that's so frustrating. He's like, my ult's up in 10. Why can't I ult this? That's like a kill if he lands yep. that. Anyway, bottom lane fight. You can see here's the upfront damage coming from Tarek into the Janna shield and stand United. But the bouncy castle coming from the uh, Callista Alistair lane setup. Binsu got the taunt, but I'm not sure it was exactly what he wanted as Max Law turns the corner. Before Max Law shows up, Binsu's like, yeah, we got this, guys. Everybody else is backing away already. Um, and here comes the single target setup, if you can get it. Lands it on two, but they only really need the follow-up onto one of them. And down they go. Almost kill participation there for Cosq. Yeah. <laughs> Almost! <laughs> Not quite. Uh, that wouldn't have just been kill participation. That would have been the kill as well, which would make yeah, the bot lane true. salty. Um, but that goes over <laughs> to uh, to Woolite. And Wendell Bo, who's looking for this dive onto Dan, has been slowed oh, down. Oh, he didn't get the Q. No, didn't get the Q. And Dan got the smite, which stole the uh, movement speed. And should be able to clear the mid lane as well. So the tower does not go down to Inspire, but a lot of the damage went away. Uh, in terms of, um, I was just looking down the CS, it's a pretty even game in terms of CS, despite how many kills have gone over to uh, to Inspire. Miles have been keeping up, and as a yeah. result, you can take a look at the, the gold difference. It's only 1,000 gold. So a lot of that is just from the fact that we've got very pocket, uh, like, segmented fights, that everybody kind of drops low, there's fights in the lane, and then people back away. And because they have to recall, it means that you don't compound any kind of CS advantage and they return to lane. So that a lot is uh, where that's coming from right now. And it means that Inspire are getting the extra gold from the kills, sure, but it, it just is bouncing back and forth on this. And you can see Inspire have a little bit of a lead in the top lane, but a, a trailing by about the same amount in mid lane. So the, the actual gold between far, uh, laners is pretty even. There is a jungle disparity though, and that jungle disparity is going through the roof as this game opens up because we're going to see Dan get more damage. <laughs> I have to wonder how it does though, because in the current meta we're seeing so many Rek'Sai's actually as he gets knocked up, makes him very squishy. Max Thor against the tower doesn't oh. quite get the damage off with at the end of the line. Wendelbo also had to pop his ultimate. Uh, it doesn't mean Dan deals more damage, but we see most Rek'Sai's run Cinderhulk in this current yeah, meta. We do, uh, just from the ability to be tanky, the ability to kind of stand in front of the AD carry damage for a long time, because once you get the the extra health, the extra armor, very difficult without Last Whisper to chunk through it. Uh, Dan wants Cosq at this point. Yeah, and he's dealing a bunch of damage to flash forwards from his team. Will finish him off, scatter the weak over the wall, takes out Cosq, so that's a nice pick. But the dragon did go over to Inspire. Cosq caught without his flash once again. That was one of the important things. Now Woolite's caught. Yeah, trying to get away from this. Fate's call comes in. Wellbow be thrown into the fight. Stan United comes up. Can he get the pop with the rend? Not quite enough damage. In with the monsoon again. Beansu looking for the tower dive onto Wendelbow, but chooses to back off as the CC. Maybe up soon. But another kill. Well, actually, they didn't kill Wallite there, but they are able to chunk him out enough that they can go into the mid lane and take that one away. Mouse firing back in this game. Yeah, they are. Mouse are doing a good job of pushing down the turrets when they're available here in this mid lane. And, and you know, that's the inner tower going down fairly early on here is going to make it a lot more difficult now for Inspire to pick and choose their fights. They have to somehow ward up the flanks better in this situation. Tarek's going bottom lane to clear that out. This is going to leave mid tower fairly vulnerable right now because there isn't a whole bunch of wave clear, but somebody has to deal with this. Otherwise, that tower goes down 100%. Uh, the minions have re-aggroed, so that shouldn't go down for now. It's going to be a Rift Herald. Yep. Uh, 
Uh, I want to know who this goes to. Probably Warlight, I would I have think, to assume. I think, yeah, it's, it's likely to be Warlight. Yeah. That's generally what we've seen from uh, teams recently. Get that extra damage. Get the uh, little buff on minions as well with the, the main pack of people pushing. Yeah, he was really good last game because he was on Corky. Um, well, they gave it to Corky, so the extra poke was absurd. Um, Beansu, I don't really think you can defend this turret. The minions should be able to take it. Warlight is able to kite him away, but down over the wall. Clears on the minion wave. What is that turret on? It must be literally single digits of HP. I Mid lane's gonna go down as well for, for Inspire. 54. Alright, not single digits. Double digits. Um, half an auto attack. From <laughs> Warlight. Well, the minions right now are gonna do enough. It's yep. They could have left that and it would have been fine. Teleport coming in mid lane. Cos Q has his flash and has caught Beansu as well. Wendelbo has the flash over the wall. Beansu was trying to close in, but opts to uh, go right. Max Law in from the bot side has been seen out by no ward. Frost Queen's claim is coming up, and they've got the Malphite ultimate here as well. So if they just catch one person that's too far forward, that is going to be a pick for Mao's pretty uh, for Inspire pretty quickly. But Mao's are backing away all the way behind the turret. There's the engage. Sebex and Rooks getting bursted down. There's the first kill into the mid lane. Another knockup combo in from Wendelbo, but they don't have the damage or the follow up really to take the second kill. Piercing Light almost picking up Malphite, but he's able to stick behind the team. Culling comes out, and a triple knockup from Dan. Beansu under the tower gets the taunt off. Wendell Bo was the one taking tower aggro though, so there's no casualties just yet from Inspire. A jump forward, trying to pick up another kill there, doesn't quite come out. But a 2 and 0 over to Inspire, and the tower goes down. Yeah, at this point, Inspire knowing that with their engage tools available, they can stand in front of that turret, and if anybody even misposition slightly they just go straight past it follow up with the damage and land that wombo combo but inspire are in a good spot right now Maus was starting to fire back in this game they just closed the gold lead and taken a very slight lead for themselves and now that's gone away now it's been blown away by inspire having a 4,000 gold lead and it's all from this play Satorius in with the engage into the final spark is just too much damage for Maus to survive through and it was a good re-engage attempt by Dan that's coming up here, but as, as you mentioned during the fight, it's Wendell Bo actually still has his ultimate available, and he's the one that takes the tower aggro here. And with the damage reduction, with the ability to just fight here after the knockup, Inspire are very confident at this point in time. And Tarek had to play that team fight so carefully because he had to burn the flash at the very start of the fight after the Malphite ultimate came in. One, good reactions, but two, having to burn the flash meant that he couldn't quite make the extra plays to pick up the low health targets in the back line and then flash out. So Mal's weren't able to get anything off of that play. Wendelbo gets the knockup onto Dan. Um, he's actually picked up the Starax gauge, so going for a, a still offensive but also defensive option instead of just going Black Cleaver. I'm sure that will be coming in the near future if the game goes that long. But Wendelbo <laughs> heading into the bush. Get away from my ward. Dan, I, I think, still wants to go for it, regardless. Oh, yes. He's like, I want this ward, and uh, I also want to split push. That's why I want to kill the He's ward, probably got so. like an item set, so like black cleavers, like all <laughs> <laughs> just all the way yeah. down. Uh, at this point, for Dan, 1 0 1, he's having a decent game. You can kind of see why Rek'Sai was banned away from him, but he is going to start to struggle. I do wonder whether he can uh, kill Koski. I think he has the damage, but. Plus Q should be able to get away here. Just zoning that away. I'm thinking, I'm like trying to add up in my head, like does he have the amount of damage in between rotations to get that kill? And I don't think so. I think, I think Cos Q, if he somehow missed everything, dies there. Yeah, finds everything doesn't bind, backwards, bind, doesn't barrier. Yeah, it's like bind auto ult and uh, pretty much kill him, so. I'm gonna go with no. Also, he chased Kozku into a small corridor. Yeah, not a good thing. <laughs> you're not gonna be able to dodge <laughs> a binding there. So, two and six in this game. Mal's definitely behind of uh, Inspire. But so they have had some good plays. It's just, it's still difficult for them to uh, make anything really happen when you have the uh, aggressive team with all of the hard engage on Inspire. Outside of finding a pick with uh, Syndra, which hasn't done all that much this game. Is, is fairly hard to do so, especially if Dan gets caught here. Clears away oh. the ward, finds an Alistair, but... Cows aren't very sneaky. No, they make a lot of noise. <laughs> they tend to lumber around. And move sometimes. I wonder if Alistair has like a cowbell as well, like a <laughs> <dash. laughs> It's like, that's not very subtle. <laughs> that might actually be like the most annoying skin uh, while walking. Anyway, Inspire were on the Baron. Now they start the engage. There's the face call, Wendell Bo blocking up the... 
front line and the back line. The front line is just gone. And Sebex and Tarek have to run away. Cutting comes across. Someone's going to have to block it for Wendelbow. But the shield out from Cosq blocks most of the damage. And that front line didn't even look like a front line. <laughs> well, the only thing that remains right now for Maus is the damage. If they step too close. Oh, flash on the combo from Wendelbow was so perfect. And Sebex can't even see what to do with the smoke screen coming up. Tarek may be going huge, though. Finds one, finds a second onto Warline. Will definitely stop the Baron. Maybe at the cost of his own life, Cosq will not follow up onto him. Tarek making the big plays. Oh, wait for the Q coming up from Cosq. He's waiting on his ult. So if Tarek sticks around, he could bind off the minion if Tarek misplays this. That's like a, a difficult thing to do. Bind will, should come out from Cosq if he wants to ult down. Hmm. That was a really readable ult. I guess he probably was not too confident on the timing yeah. of Dan arriving there. I would have liked to have seen Koski just try and burst Dan. I think you could have sent him straight back to the fountain at that point. Yeah. He wouldn't have died though because Derex, but uh, we are going to take true. a look at that Baron Gage again. So here was the engage. As, uh, man, this is, as you said, this is the front Rip. line getting final sparked out of this fight before it even began. Um, and that was enough for uh, Inspire just to be able to take this fight pretty handily. Tarek has a fair amount of damage for himself as well, even though he only had uh, Essence Reaver Zeal at this point. This is still fairly early on in the game, so uh, a fight like this against the Squishies, he's able to output a fair amount of damage. I think a lot of that damage actually came from Sebex, if yeah. from the uh, Unleashed Power. Unleashed Power Scatter of the Week. Uh, he also lands a really nice Scatter of the Week just before that Baron happens, so if that Scatter of the Week hadn't landed, uh, I probably would have gotten the follow-up and killed both of them, so <laughs> stop that from happening. Then uh, his life for Aya and died, and then uh, Tarek picked up a double kill. Maybe this is a little ambitious from Inspire. Yes, they have Kalista, but they're taking a lot of damage, and they go back into it once again, but Warlight was the last one to come out of that pit and got chunked by it. He's very low. If they go for a fight here, this may be one of the best chances that Maz have to win one. Wendelbo trying to zone people so long. away. That is a lot of Ren stacks. All that Warlight has been doing is hitting that. He missed oh, it! Oh, Dad gets the steal! And now this could be the fight that Maz have been looking for. Cosq gets locked down. Zerex will take him out on the outside. But meanwhile, inside of the pit, it is the meat grinder. Inspire picks up that kill. Tarek jumps in, picks up the kill onto Warlight before he can get away. Scaps of the week with the lockdown. And Santris trying to get away from this fight. But the angry follow up. Tarek wants him. Arden Blaze connects. The flash, the scan of the week. And no Another kill over the Sebex, a three for two, and the Baron over to Maus. Miscommunication there by Maxlaw and Woolite. Normally, as you get that Baron down to about 1800 health, that's when you call for the Rend and the Smite together. Maxlaw didn't get the Smite off, and it meant the Baron remained on 200 health. That's when Dan comes in, smites the the, uh, the Baron away, and Maus have turned this game completely around with that with that pickup. Watch this setup. I want to look at whether Maxlaw was actually stunned or, or locked down as this goes low. Maxlaw nope. was free there at that situation. Look at his smite cooldown. It's available. Normally you smite first into Callista Ren because you cannot deal enough damage to outsmite that Callista. It's pretty much impossible at that point with that many Ren stacks on it. So really, really rough there for Inspire, but that was exactly what Maus needed to get themselves back into the game. The rest of the fight was kind of child's play after that. Everyone played so well and did their part in that fight as well. Like, Sebex landing constant stuns um, in these fights was, was great. Dan actually getting the steal was one of the biggest things in that. Um, and yeah, that was just kind of a classic dig baron. Like, Inspire went for that when the entire enemy team was up. Yes, they had Callista, but she then got tr uh, got chunked by the Baron, and then they were back in again. So, I don't know. It was it was a little weird. It still means that Inspire's on the aggression, but with the Baron minis, it's slightly harder to wave clear. Yeah. And if they make one misstep here, then Maus, they probably won't finish, but they'll take another in here. Man, you so rarely see that happen. So rarely do you see a Callista team screw up a Baron like that. Mm. That is... Uh, a little bit worrying, actually. But nevertheless, mistakes happen. Inspire will have to play with that as uh, they're given right now. As you said, they were still on the aggressive, but down in the bottom lane, Beansu is able to hold pretty much anybody here. Can't push up to the turret, though. With the Sunfire Cape, can't afford to have it aggro. It's, uh, <laughs> the turret is too much damage for Beansu, actually, to uh, to take. So if you would step forward. Satorius did recall there. 
That also gets the cooldown now from Scatter the Weak. So as Maus continue to push, they just have to be aware that a counter engage coming from Inspire could be... Oh, uh, Wendelbow. This game has started to fall apart for Inspire right now on a, an individual play level. Really is. I mean, I would be tilted after that Baron leaving me if I was on Inspire right now. And with this poke coming in from the side from Dan, I'm just here, but Dan maybe almost called out. He's going to tunnel away. Maxor gets him with the end of the line, and this tower's still being sieged in. Um, Baron has expired, though. Maxor taking a bit of damage, a bit of poke, but the Lux Shield is exceptionally strong in these situations. That tower, I'm not even sure it's going to go down. Maybe with a double tap from Tarek, he's going to be shielded up here, and they do manage to take it away. But look at the... Uh, I was looking at the base tower there. It's okay. Yeah. It's living. It's uh, it's living. Sorry, I was trying to look at it really closely. I was a little too far yeah. away. <laughs> I was I like, like, you're is getting it, uncomfortably is it dying? close is it? to my screen. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the other side of the screen for yeah. me. I'm like leaning into it. I had a weird moment. Okay, I'll yeah. just, uh, take it away, false. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got the recalls coming in from Maus, going back, picking up some items. S pretty standard build in from Tarek, gone for the rapid fire cannon for the extra crit on top of his uh, essence reaver, basically the the build that you go from there. Uh, also picked up the um, bloodthirster just to mitigate some of the bursts coming in from Inspire. However, if he is called out by some of the bursts, then he's probably dead anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it just means in a prolong uh, prolong trade, he'll be. Uh, in slightly better shape. Yeah, he, well, there are a whole load of shields that go on him, though. So even if he does get caught out, That's stand true. united into Janna shield. I would say should be enough through the Bloodthirster shield as well. So uh, And Locket as, as well, so yeah. harder for Koscu to burst him. Captain Boots on Janna, though. I like it. Okay. Aids in the disengage. You just uh, turn around, run away, and everybody gets in movement speed to run away. Yeah, and also the passive, because there was a change to it with Tailwind, where uh, allies only get the movement yes. speed if they move towards Janna. So you're going to be Knock playing that way Sebex. anyway, Sebex. But the Stanley United comes in, and that's a lot of burst already. It has to go immediately into the zone. As Tarek on the bot side immediately gets uh, CC'd up before he gets into the fight. Wendelbo is taking all of this damage, and now he's able to block the cutting. Tarek gets knocked up and knocked into the team. They should be able to pick up this kill. Inspire takes him down at the cost of Wendelbo. Now the chase comes in from Inspire, and Binsu is slowed down by the cheese wheel coming out. Max Law can confer the kill onto Rux but he's kind of out of range and will get knocked up. Beansu trying to take him out in uh, Ignite comes out in from Rux as well. And the auto, the key strike takes him out from Beansu and Rux trying to get away from this fight now, but comes in for the ward. Beansu is also there and may have to die for him. Warlight gets a bit of chunk down. Sebex throws the uh, Krog over the wall, doesn't quite land it. That's a very messy fight towards the end, but a three for two over to Inspire in the end. Really messy fight, but Inspire are hanging on to this despite that Baron buff misplay for uh, Inspire. They still are seeming to hold their nerve. They haven't got the lead though as Maus are at uh, 55.1k, about 3k gold up. Inhibitor has respawned. That's one of the key things. Now Maus have to somehow push down turrets against this hard engage that comes from Inspire. So Inspire will continuously be looking to pick people off exactly like this. Good double knockup into the Lux Salt as uh, they manage to, again, land another binding onto one of the key damage dealers. And it makes the fight a little bit easier for Inspire, but you can see from Maus's point of view, still a lot of health left on Tarek. All of the shields kept him alive for long enough. <laughs> but he was ultimately burst back into the rest of the team. So uh, if, if the team fights still go like this for Inspire at the beginning of this, they should be able to close this game, well, close this game to an even point, but we are still a way away from that. Rip. I did catch at the start of the fight, uh, Binsu landed the really nice flash taunt onto, uh, onto Graves, and we just had the end of this replay as well, where Binsu tries to get Warlight, maybe with enough damage from Sebex, but ultimately it wasn't, and Warlight just kind of kills him. <laughs> just goes, okay, yep. you uh, you want to come at me? <laughs> yeah. He thought he had Titanic Hydra, but uh, no, did no not. pulse. No Titanic Hydra, Shen builds. <laughs> Last item, it's good. Come on, make it happen, Beansu. In competitive play, you very rarely see it because you just want more tanky stats and the rest of your team comes from it. Because um, it's more of a, like, that's more of a solo queue build where you have to go 1v9. But Oh, I hate seeing this. In competitive. I really, like, junglers playing graves should not clear wards in the Baron pit. I'm yeah. just going to say it. Or like, position differently so the pellets don't it, fly at Baron. Yeah, that's the other thing, because like we actually saw that with Gilius in the LCS, that he autoed Baron and lost like all of his health. Yeah. 
And he's like, oh, wh why is Baron I... Oh, I attacked it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's annoying enough clearing wards as, uh, as Graves, let alone when one of your auto attacks, like, aggroes something like Baron. Because you're not really, you're not tanky. You're good at not getting bursted because of the build you go, because you usually go like Sterics more. So it stops you from bursted, but you still get killed very quickly by like um, high chunks of damage at a time. Yeah. Like Baron. Like Baron. Funny enough, does that. Uh, Dan, try and get some vision before this uh, this pressure comes out. But Inspire, will they have learned from the last play, which was do not start it immediately when the entire enemy team is around you. Problem is, enemy team have four blue trinkets. So yes. uh, good luck baiting Baron on that one. They only have one alive, but you only need one. Yeah, you only so. need, you only ever need one at a time to make sure that they're not doing Baron. Ro Ro. However, Dan has seen through this bait or this uh, bluff, should I say? Is uh, Dan's like, well, we see three of the mid, but they have a Callista and a Malfoy. Hmm. This is this, this is, is gonna really be one risky. huge rend when this goes up. It is, but last time Dan still got it, so we're gonna have Stand this fight come. Comes he in. goes in and doesn't get it this time. Finally, the rend comes out, and this time, the uh, Inspired do manage to pick it up. Monsoon comes out, but this looks like uh, it's actually not going that well for Inspire. Maxlaw is still kiting out of the Dragon Pit of the Baron Pit. Dan goes down, and now this fight may be turning around. Koski has now arrived into the fight. Satorius in his 1v4, looking for the double kill, gets it, but now he doesn't really have anything else, and he's run out of gasoline in the tank. Three for two, over to Mauslow, but with the Baron going over to Inspire, they still have it on two members. Yeah, they hold it on two members, which means that their push should be fairly strong right now, and all they've got to do is wait for their engage tools to come back up again. In fact, Fate's Call didn't look to be used. I didn't quite catch whether that was just not available at the beginning of this or if Warlight didn't have the option, if uh, Alistair died too far out before that Fate's Call was available. Smite and Rend War finally went through this time for uh, Mouse. Yeah, Warlight died completely out of range. That uh, Wendelbow wasn't around, couldn't use his ultimate, so that's why it's up. Maxwell got himself over the back of the pit and finally just kind of one-shots <laughs> the last little bit of remaining health of Dan. But from here, Inspire are in a decent situation. They can likely look to close the game here. Even though Satorius fell and lost another one of the Baron buff, they do have it on, on uh, Maxlaw, and I believe it's on Cos Q as well. And that's a good situation for them to be in because it means that they have reliable and fairly safe champions that that Baron buff is on for the next couple of minutes. The funny thing about this game is Mal has actually taken the gold lead in this game yeah. after being so far down at the start of it. Uh, but still with Baron, this is a massive uh, power play that can be made over the next couple of minutes. That was the flash being used defensively by Cosq, but in this play, they Whoa. detonate Tarek and Beansu is on his way out. The engage also onto Rux and Sebex. He also has to flash out of the fight. Dan goes in, but he's not all all that tanky, well, I gets hit up, but he can't even break the shield that's on top of him from Cosq. And the kill onto Taractus is a five versus four. Satorius is just kind of in their base right now. Um, he's just doing that. <laughs> he's just standing there. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know how they're going to get him out of there. I mean, base. he doesn't have a way to get <laughs> out because he doesn't <laughs> have his ultimate. Walk out. But the minions arrive, so his team is there. And he is tanky enough. Dan gets knocked up, gets taken down. Walleye picks up the kill. 2 and 0. And this looks like it could be the 2 and 0 oh from Inspire. Miles, they had a good mid game where they started making some plays. But ultimately, it was not enough. Wendell Bow pops his ultimate. And it's all about just trying to pad those stats now as they take down the first Nexus turret, the second one as well. Beansu trying to get a taunt down onto the carries, gets it onto Max Law, but he doesn't really have any damage behind him. Doesn't have the Titanic Hydra. That's the second win over to Inspire. What a showing. Well, it was, well, <laughs> it In was the first good. Game. It was good. Well, first game <laughs> and most of the second game. I, my mind still goes back to that rend. Yeah, triggered. Still on the rend, but, uh, you know, it, it was a solid game. When you look at their engages, they were always catching the right person at the right time, utilizing the light binding very well. Uh, another solid game from them. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing more from them now as this goes yeah. along. Uh, I think they got potential. Still a little bit rough on some of the communication when it's where are we moving on the map. 
w you know, what objectives are we looking at? So, I mean, there, there's still room to grow there for sure. Yeah, rough around the edges. Uh, Mal's do have a lot of issues, but in terms of the individual players, I was actually more impressed by Sedrin. He started looking really good, by the way, at the end of the last split. Yeah. We praised him, but ultimately he didn't go anywhere. This time, started making some good plays along with Sevex. Didn't have a good game one. Didn't really have a good start to the game uh, this time around. But then as the game went on, uh, he started landing some really good scatter the weeks and some really good followers. But it wasn't enough to win the game. There was a small glimmers of uh, really good play from the players. There was, yeah. And I, I was pretty impressed by some of his team fights. And then others, <laughs> he'd just get bound and then like die. Yeah. Which is, is you know, against that kind of team I mean, fight when you've got Lux, when you got, uh, yeah, when you've got like Lux, when you've got Alistair, Malfoy. Malfoy. <laughs> like, good luck, good luck yeah. staying alive in that kind of situation. I mean, it's kind of his fault. He did pick the Syndra very early on into the draft. It was blind. Yes, yeah. it was. And then uh, an entire hard engaged composition got picked into him. So, yeah, unfortunate. Uh, we do have a replay, though, that we do want to play. Uh, Mal's, it was the Baron Steel. Baron Steel! Steel um, in yeah, quotation marks. I mean, credit, credit to Dan on taking it. I mean... Ah, that's... 39 health. That's Unlucky. sad to see. It's like when it jumps from, like, 1802 to, like, 230-something, and then to, like, 39. I was like, oh, no. You gave him two opportunities at this point. Yeah, oh. and he took it. And he got yep. it. He yeah. got it. It looked like Mouse could have come back. They took it. an in-hip. Yeah, they that. took an in-hip. So, yeah, strong Baron power play. But, uh, yeah, ultimately, they would, like, Inspire was still so strong. And they still find re uh, found really good engages in that game, regardless. Had the second Baron gone over to Mouse, then they probably would have yeah. been Because they oh. had the gold advantage even at that point as well. I, I had like visions of, of with all of those Callista stacks yeah. just r like not getting it somehow. They're like, oh, I can render 3k. Don't render 3k. No. <laughs> 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 render 4k and it's like, ah. Oh, dear. Yeah. Well, I mean, what what else to talk about from Inspire? Wendelbow looked pretty good. Uh, especially his, uh, his Trundle game in the first are great. game. Yeah, it looked really, really solid. So, honestly, all the way down the line, I, I was pretty impressed with Inspire. Maus, I still think, have uh, areas to improve on. I, I think Sebex looked a little uncertain in the mid lane role today, but certainly not, not like, not a big, big worry for these teams. Yeah. Um, definitely for COSQ as well, one of the standouts in, mm. in this series for me, really uh, started showing up. Um, the outplay as well on Lux was, yes, uh, was yeah. fantastic. Was the first cool. game as well was still very cool with Corky landing those rockets. Um, maybe it's just like the, the Wicked effect, where it's just like leave the team and then start performing <laughs> well. The opposite of a Kassing effect. Um, but anyway, we're going to head to a quick break. But when we get back, Copenhagen Wolves and SK Gaming will be going head-to-head, -head, so stay tuned.